Did you know? Really? No, sorry, I'll refrain from being an idiot. So I'll make a new um, sub patcher here to make a window. Oh yeah, what am I doing? Yeah, I'm making a, sort of a greenlit percussion instrument thing, sort of little sign blips for making percussion. <clears throat> I'm gonna make a, a new sub patcher to make a window in, so P window. -a. Cares. P, P window where I'm going to create an expression to draw right a buffer. I guess we could start off with a buffer. So a new buffer, and we'll call it um, wind. Wind. Okay, so this is kind of the Australian um, uh, patch a day. And this came from somewhere that I actually don't know where. And doing this whole thing is probably really convoluted, but um, expression <coughs> exp, which I suppose means something about exponents. I don't know where I got this. So um, negative one times, um, if you know where I got this, uh, you can tell, give me a, uh, give me a buzz and tell me what where I got it from, dollar f one minus dollar f three, um, and that whole thing then times dollar uh, f one times minus dollar f three. This is all looking a lot like squared, and someone probably spent hours building this expression, but I'm just building it for you because I can't remember. Um, close bracket, close bracket, divided by um, 2 times dollar $f2 times dollar $f2, so another square, um, 2 close brackets, divided by bracket dollar $f2 times word. Um, two times three point one four one six. I know that's like pi right there. So um, if this actually got together, and then the the values that this person that I can't remember, like I said, I can't remember where I got this from. So um, this would be a spread value according to what their thinking is, and this would be a peak value over here, which would be 0 0.5. So I can just load those values in. And this should be, we're trying to generate a Gaussian window. Um, and yeah, I can zoom in on this in case you want to pause the video and spend the next five hours writing out that expression. Uh, I hope I wrote it out correctly, or else this whole thing won't work and I'll have to go back to the start again. All right. Like I said, these are kind of the, the, the what something or other in the spread. What did it say again? It said um, spread and peak. All right. Uh, as with a lot of this kind of buffer generation, a really great way to do that is making a new object called Uzi. It's just like a machine gun, pow, pow. And we're going to... Um, Uzi uh, 512, meaning to say we're going to create 512 bangs, or we'll use this index value here. So that index starts at 1 for on Uzi. I'm not quite sure whose um, idea that was because basically I always just subtract 1 to create an index for that. And that's the value that we're going to use in here, except we're going to use 0 to 1. So we need to divide that by 512 float. Not that, but through this. And all of this stuff is going to go through to a peak without the A, peak with two E's, peak, and we'll give it the name of our window, which was Winda. Okay, Winda, and um, there's a value that they use on this thing as well to scale it, um, because I think it goes out of the zero to one range if you don't. So this is the value that I just stole again from somewhere else and don't know where. 
zero point three one three three. Right, that means we're looking at that. All right, so we can trigger this value um, through this equation, and then also trigger it to as an index there. My guess is we're going to need a bang here, so B for button, for bangs, and all that. And if everything's working well, that should have created our window, which it didn't, so I'm a little disappointed with that. Um, window is empty, or does it just need some time? Let's give it a time value and see if that helps. So we'll give it, you know, 100 milliseconds. I think that's just too long, but who cares? Um, there we go. So there's our Gaussian window, which is just a nice sort of steep slope going up and, a, and, a, and a, I mean, no, not so steep going up, but getting increasingly steep and then smoothing off towards the end. Nice little blippy sort of window. Okay, that was probably altogether too complicated and I could have just referred you to somewhere else to get that window action going on. Let's build, uh, we're going to use poly to do this. So I'm going to make a new abstraction to load into the poly. Um, and this new abstraction is going to have an in like they will. So in, I'm going to give it a number, one. And then it's going to have a signal out, so out, a signal, one. Right. And I'm going to use that new buffer that I just created there. So cycle, I'm going to read cycle tilde with the window and this is going to be my uh, windowing thing going on here and I'm going to use an oscillator as well um, and it's going to be synced to this cycle tilde over here is going to be synced to this um, window I'm going to have I'll try for example I'm going to have eight cycles, so eight um, oscillate, uh, oscillations of a, of a sine wave here for each window that I create. So I'm going to make a new, well, let's just to see what, how we're going to trigger these off. I'm going to use a line tilde um, so that we're going from zero to one, reading this window, zero to one over some amount of time. We can make a message to do to format that, so zero comma one over whatever comes in, so dollar one for that. All right, good. So that's going to be this dollar one value, the only input to our um, to our poly tilde abstraction is going to be the time for the um, the duration of the blip. But that's also going to relate to the frequency of the blip. I'm going to for every one of these windows, I'm going to have eight oscillations of my oscillator thingy. So eight times tilde eight. And off in some um, weird off chance that the this left the right inlet of cycle tilde doesn't do a modulus already, I will indeed make a new object with modulus tilde one. So it's doing the same thing as what I. I kind of suspect that this right in later cycle tilde does the modulus anyway, but I'm doing that modulus. Modulus is the um, percentage sign, in case you didn't get that already. And the old, every time you window, you generally multiply the signal by the window. Yes. Okay. So this is going to be our abstraction for the poly tilde. We'll call this something, save it somewhere where we can remember. And I'll call it um, green, grainy, grainy. Oh yes, that's, no, that's grainy, grainy. Okay. So we can now go ahead and um, create a new poly tilde over here with the name grainy. Now let's just say, let's make four of them. I don't know, let's get greedy. This is extremely cheap on the CPU. Can't find it. There's no surprise there. We need to save this in the same place and call it my excellent green. My excellent greens. That's beautiful. Again, we should be able to find that once we've saved it in the same directory and we can verify, yes, there it is. 
Now let's see what happens with this number coming in. We've got a signal coming out. Let's put an easy DAC on the output of this. Um, it's monophonic. You could, of course, make it polyphonic using all sorts of methods. Then I'll use an integer box coming in here just to see how it sounds. Uh, I probably need to give it a target, don't I? And let's just give it message target one with this uh, every time. This is just a test, see how this thing sounds. So let's see. So it's going to make pretty um, not very useful uh, lower tones. Those higher clicks are kind of cool though. I'm thinking I might just use the one through four for my um, excellent drum machine that I'm going to make. Someone asked me about, um, actually, before we go ahead, let's just um, do this. Well, okay, we can just obliterate this entire thing. I might leave that target message because I'll need something usually, or one usual way is to send target the target message a list with the voice number dollar one and the first item in the list and the second item in the list being the value to send or that could be an extensive list longer list um, for values to send to each um, target um, in the poly tilde all right so for uh, somebody asked me about sequencing and, and, and whether I could talk about sequencing and I suppose I can sort of talk about sequencing but I suppose what I tend to do more often is use Ableton Live for sequencing. I know that sounds like a cop out but of course it is and Ableton Live does a great job of sequencing and um, I've probably done this before and I've seen other YouTube patches of it before using cell block to do the sequencing and then oh, it's not called cell block it's called matrix control see I don't even know the names of the patches let's say I want um, uh, let's get the inspector open here I might want a sequence that is like 32 notes long so where do I get this from number of columns 32 and I might want number of rows I'm gonna leave that at 4 okay so now I can resize this so 32. Actually, going back to my inspector, I'm going to make one that's 16. 32 looks altogether too long, or too much, too much programming. Uh, right. So there's my. That's I'm going to call this my sequencer, and I've you know like I said I've seen this someone else's tutorial on on uh, YouTube that does this uh, tempo. Oh. Uh, Tempo has a couple of arguments. That's the tempo in BPM. 120 is like the default for most applications. Uh, one is the division, and I think uh, 16 is the number of um, beats, I suppose, depending on how you look at it. You use a toggle to turn it on and off. So T for toggle to turn off your on and off your metronome, and you'll see if you hook up an integer box here, you'll be able to see this thing counting up at 120 BPM from 0 to 15, as you might expect. All right, to use this as a sequencer, um, we might want one thing, which is kind of dumb, but we'll, we want maybe um, to use, to give you some visual display of what beat it is that you're actually playing back. And so we can make a message to turn on one of the elements in that. Um, dollar one which is the, um, the column and zero which will be our row and we'll turn that on when we get this number in here that's all very good and we can see that we're turning on that button and now we probably want something to turn it off once we've turned it on or you know after <laughs> so yeah we'll, we'll get the old value from our timer um, so here's the Value being stored, that's our old value, and we're going to bang that out every time with the similar message, but instead of a one at the end, we're going to use a zero to turn it off. So that's now going to turn that thing off every time. So that looks 
that's a lot more respectable as a kind of a yeah, some kind of signal. I mean, some kind of display of where you're at in your um, matrix control there. The next thing I'm probably going to want to do because I can now like put beats in here, put all these beats. Yeah, you can call them beats, or you can call them whatever you want. All right, so that's that's awesome. You can make beats like using this thing um, to actually output this thing. Uh, what we're going to want to do is to get the column each time for where we're at with this um, tempo object. So I'll make the message get column get column get column. It's going to be, oh yeah, dollar one would be a good idea. Max is complaining. Bad arguments. No, no argument is a bad argument. So dollar one. And then Max stops complaining. All right, so now out of this um, right outlet, we'll be getting these values as a list. If I make a new object to print that, we'll see that you, know, you have ones and zeros for each column, depending on whether the um, whether one of these things is turned on or off. Okay, so I'm going to unpack that list. Uh, I've got four rows, four columns, uh, no, four rows. Yeah, so each one of these is going to be now the column associated with, uh, with this tempo thing on the, each one of those four rows. We're not interested in that row because that's the one that I'm using for my display. And these other rows, I could select on those, I guess, so we'll make a new, we'll select uh, one. So each time I get a, a one is true on there, then I'm going to make a short note. So I'll make, actually, we already, did I do this? No, so one, this is a really short note. Um, I'm going to, that could be a message. In fact, let me do that instead. Message one. So this is going to be our one of our notes. Um, we could worry about the polyphonic part, part of this thing. And sure, why not? Oops. Um, new object. We can make a make note, which is just going to have We'll give it a default velocity velocity of 100. So it's going to make the note with a pitch one that's going to last one millisecond. Um, and this is where our poly polyphonic voice handling will happen. Since I have eight grain players in there, I can have an eight poly eight going on here. And I guess I'm only interested in the notes on, so I can now use a strip note on this poly tilde strip note. All right, good, good. I mean, I'm assuming this is, no, that's not right. <laughs> uh, that's the pitch and this is the velocity. Yes, indeed. And this would give us our um, voice number. So that's perfect. We can use that as the first item in the list. And then just this is our pitch is gonna be our is going to be our pitch. It's going to be our um, second item in that list. So we can make a pack for those two things. Pitch, second, voice number, first. Perfect. Uh, yes, but I only want to send this when it's... Um, so this strip note was actually completely superfluous. I could get rid of it, but since it is superfluous, that's fine. I only want to send the... Um, Make the make the sound when this is a um, when the when the um, velocity is non-zero, which since I'm packing this together in a list, I this voice number as the first element in the list, I want to gate that um, voice number using velocity. So zero velocity won't will not allow the um, voice number to go through. We'll see if this is actually making sounds. All right, you can, so you can hear we're playing the sequence from that first little flickety doodah. I might put another one down here for number two. This is going to be an octave lower, I guess. Um,
Maybe it's not highly differentiated enough to hear it. It's probably, it just sounds a lot louder. And again, for the, our kick drum, if you like, um, we could put an eight or something here. I don't know. Pretty high pitched kick drum is my guess. All right, so there's my little grainlet percussion instrument thing. Um, like I said, I used live for the sequencing side, so this is kind of rubbish, but um, yeah, more on this sort of thing some other day, but th this is it for this week. Cheers.